What's up, people? I'm the Dungeon Coach, and this is the best keybind video out there because this is tailored specifically for you. I'm not just going to share what I do with my keybinds and what you should do and what other people do. This is all about you. I guarantee you that there are principles in this video that you are not doing right now that you can make even little tweaks to your amazing keybinds that you might have amazing keybinds and make a small tweak and like it even better. Or you might be awful and terrible and not even realize it. And that's not a bad thing. People play this game and they just level up and they just throw abilities into random spots and they just get used to it. And the fact of getting used to it is an excuse for something that's ultimately not as optimal and not as fun. So as with a lot of my videos, I challenge you to shake off of that and try it out. Try it out for one or two weeks, see what it feels like. And I promise you at least something will be better. Leave me a comment and let me know because I have done two other keybind videos. One video is focusing on the keyboard. That video talks about where to put your keybinds, on what button and what the most optimal tier one buttons are, all the way down to what buttons you should be pressing at tier four. Check that out, it'll be down in the description. You can watch these videos really in any order. The second video I did was on keybind groupings, which is pairing things up across all characters. But in order for you to do that, you have to be able to have your first character. And then in general, I try and bind all of my characters in these similar ways. But here we're gonna go through that process of what buttons to put where for you and a lot of different options that you're gonna hear. And some of these, oh, that sounds really cool. And start doing that. Pause the video, move your buttons around on your character. And some things you'll be like, no, I'd never do that. That sounds dumb, but that's good for you because you are a process of elimination, getting things as no's or yeses. And then you'll be left with some things to make some decisions on. And at the end of the video, we're gonna dive into some more advanced thoughts that you might never even thought about before. All right, let's go to a train dummy and get into some action here. First things up are the types of buttons you're pressing. So you gotta categorize these in your head and then we're gonna put them on your keyboard in a certain way. The first type are your rotation abilities. If I am attacking this target dummy and I was just going through my rotation, very simple, no cooldowns press. And my, my definition of a cooldown is anything less than 15 seconds. Anything over, 30 seconds is a cooldown. And when I say rotational, that means you're using it constantly all the time. You are building things up, you are spending resources, whatever your class is doing, this is applicable for all classes. So I am pressing certain abilities to build up certain resources. I have a pain bar right here, I'm building this up, and then I'm spending things and bringing it down. What are those buttons? In fact, here's an old chart I have. These are not the current keybinds that I use, but it, it was something I used in the past. I've since optimized them. But this is every tank in the game, all six tanks, and every ability in the game that they have. Grab each of these abilities. I'm gonna move them over here. So I have every single, a raise ally, every single ability possible for the Death Knight, for se. There we go, I have every single keybind that I could possibly keybind. And in this, I have just a different types of things. I talk about it in the other video as far as categories go. Uh, but I'm gonna clear all these out just for the sake of showing y'all what I would do if I was literally was you. There we go, this is every possible keybind that I could press. Middle mouse button, shift middle mouse button, scroll mouse wheel up, all the other buttons. Also, as a disclaimer, I use ESDF for movement, which is also far more optimal. I have a whole video on that, will be linked in the description as well. But mouse button's all here, one, two, three, four, all the stuff that I would ever maybe press, ever. There's also some things like shift mouse buttons you can put on here. Whatever buttons you are comfortable with, look at your keyboard, look at your mouse, write them all out here. And then also write out every ability that you have for your character. You can easily go to your character, open up your spell book, and then just go, make sure you don't forget your racial abilities, write down every single one of these abilities, and write down every single one of your, spe your spec abilities. No need to write down passives, but you get the idea. So there you go, I have it all done right here. The first thing is your rotation. Those are big, different types of things that you really need to think about those is differently than some of these other ones. Other one is mobility, things of you moving around. I think that's a very important thing of how you move around and it should go in a certain spot on your keyboard and not just be intermixed with a bunch of other stuff. Then you have really important things like interrupts and crowd controls. These are usually more important in PVP, but they still are important, especially interrupts in PVE as well. Then finally you have cooldowns, anything over 30 seconds, especially over a minute or two minutes, that is a cooldown. And the longer the cooldown, the less often you'll use it, the more situational are less and less likely to use. So you should put those in less and less optimized buttons, which I talk about in that first video. So I'm gonna organize these real quick.
All right, this is what you would do on your character. For rotation, I have my basic rotation. This is a little bit of an exception, so I'm going to move this down. It's a ranged ability, so a little farther, and you don't consistently use it, so that is a little bit different. Whereas all of these, I constantly use on rotation. It's going to be different for every class. Mobility, I got two different mobilities. Cool. For interrupts, I have an interrupt, a stun, and a crowd control. Offensive cooldowns, there's only two. Defensive cooldowns, this is a little interesting, and I separated it here. These two are, yes, it's a taunt and a defensive cooldown you can use pretty regularly. I don't... Part use them as part of a rotation like automatically so I'm going to separate those in the defensive cooldown category but maybe towards the top of that list and these are very much longer cooldowns same thing with the death grip chains of ice those are utility based things and then there's a cooldown longer utility based things the big picture is to organize this on your head organize this on an excel spreadsheet of some kind a piece of paper I did this on a piece of paper all the time in college and stuff but these are now where I'd be like okay I'm going to definitely put this here I'm definitely putting this and you can start filling it in pause the video make you one of these and then we can keep going through this together now that we've organized these things we got to think about the sections of the keyboard and again the full video is explained on this but this is the full section of an ESDF setup keyboard and if you also are a WSD user there you go you can use this as well but this is kind of how you should think about your keyboard and it might be different for you of how you put things on the keyboard there are buttons that are better and easier to press than other buttons you should never bind 789 or the zero button by actually having to reach across and press it for some reason so my thought process here again ESDF uh, WSD doesn't matter for this my thought process is I want to put things in certain places on my keyboard so and again this could be different for anybody but for this keyboard I'm gonna use a little, a little pointer here I think of the keyboard in different categories this for me is one section of the keyboard right around above this line the line of so whether it's WSD it'd be Q caps lock all this stuff right here this is one line and in my opinion this is the tier one buttons but I have certain abilities here in my case it's my rotation. I really like that. Another category of the keyboard is right here in the top line above in this one, two, three, four line, right? Whenever you press these buttons, you are having to move your fingers up sometimes to press them in whatever ways with that other finger. In general, I usually keep my, my middle finger anchored here and I try and use my other fingers as much as possible, except for three or in WASD's case, two. But even two, you could hit with your pinky finger. But anyway, whatever it is, you can think of these different things. And for myself, I draw a line between two and three right here on the keyboard. Board. Three, four, and five are different buttons for me than one and two are. For me, one and two are health stone and health potion, always. Another section of the keyboard is below my hand, anything down here. I also separate this into Z and X are kind of paired together, and C and V are kind of paired together because of the fingers that press them. C and V are pressed with my pointer finger, so I think of that categorically different in my head than X and Z because that's pressed with my ring finger or pinky finger. Then the other categories are mouse wheel, scrolling up, down, shift, scrolling up, down, down, control scrolling up and down and the final category would be the actual mouse buttons however many of those you have use them as best as you can however many you have and that's a different category as well and even on that mouse I separate it in my head I have one four and seven these buttons are interrupting crowd controls always for every character these buttons have to do with my mount and map and other thing like that and these buttons are usually cooldowns these are all different places that you can put your keybinds and in that second video I talk about the different spots and the different places you can kind of try and put them and all that kind of stuff right so again the big picture now we're going to talk about some advanced categories here in key binding is pairing things together. If you have an ability of some kind that's activation procs off of using something else, those two abilities are tied together. Different things about them are tied together. So if you want to have the original ability be R or whatever button you have, and then right next to it, this is the proc. On my keyboard, a lot of times I have R be my spammable shield slam, whatever it is you're using all the time. And then if a proc happens, pew, it's T, I just tap over and press it. For you, you might have all of your abilities on the right side and maybe proc based things are on the left side of your hand. But I want to caution you with that because I I, in general, try not to have all of my rotation on the right side because then I'm just pressing and my one finger is just hopping around right here instead of having two different things right here. So I can press W and R back and forth very, very quickly because two different fingers are responsible for that button. And in general, I don't like to move my middle finger off of the... I, I never press R with my middle finger. I leave my middle finger glued to the movement. See, just, it, it feels better for me. So because of that, I will have things on left or right sides of this E button. Another advanced concept is your keybind should have an intuitive feel to them. Whenever you use them, it kind of could make sense. So what that looks like is demon hunters have an ability called fell rush. You dash forwards to the target. They also have an ability called vengeful retreat that does this big backflip going backwards. Then they also have ability that dashes you forwards called the hunt and it dashes you forwards. So for me, something very intuitive for that 
is the mouse wheel. So scroll forward is Fellblade and scroll backward is Vengeful Retreat. Actually, that's a lie. Scroll forwards is, is Fell Rush and shift scroll backwards is Vengeful Retreat. In general, it's because Vengeful Retreat has a 25 second cooldown, it's a little bit longer. And usually, mouse wheel scroll back is my defensive cooldown because it's very simple for me to get Demon Spikes, Warrior Shield Block, whatever type of little small cool. There's a really short cooldown on Demon Spikes and it's an active mitigation, meaning you have to keep it up all the time, something I'm going to be using a lot. So I like to have something that I'm not spamming. Nothing spammable on a mouse wheel or you'll break your mouse wheel in a week like I did with my druid putting heal over times on there. And I was just scrolling all over the place. Don't do that. Anyway, it's very nice for me to have my hand on the mouse doing whatever I'm doing with my rotation and then just actively keeping my mitigation up by just every once in a while scrolling back on the scroll wheel. But if you hate that concept, maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to have something that you have to constantly kind of keep tabs on. Maybe that's three. And maybe that only time that you that you move your finger is just to tap that real quick. Now, I wouldn't like that because, again, I don't like moving my finger off of this. Maybe it's W or Q, something a little bit out of the way, but you just kind of tap it and you kind of keep it up. Uh, I used to have mine on W, and that felt good for me. Maybe caps lock or A. Maybe it's a mouse button you press with your thumb, and that's just kind of where your thumb sits, and you can always just kind of squeeze the mouse a little bit. That feels good. On my warrior, scroll forward is charge. On my feral druid, scroll forward is charge. All that stuff. On my death knight, scroll backwards is death grip. And another advanced thing I perfectly can show you on my monk is a sequence and a rotation and a smartness to how you lay out your keybinds. If there's some sort of rotation or combo opener, what I mean by that is if your rotation follows a certain pattern, it would be very nice if your keybinds follow that pattern literally on your keyboard. Here's what I mean. You can see down here on the very bottom, this is G on my keyboard, T, R, W, Q. Again, from the keyboard view, it's G, T, R, W, Q. And if you notice, that follows a literal flow across the keyboard, across the keyboard, instead of having a bit, bit, bop, bit, 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 bit all over the place, like a like whack-a-mole. And Brewmaster Monks are notorious for having far too many buttons to press, so this is a perfect example, because whenever I played this one, I, was, I just, I put the abilities in certain spots, and I was like, okay, here we go, and I just did my first iteration. It felt like I was all over the place, and I just never knew what to hit, and it was literally felt like whack-a-mole. Now how it works is I press G, I keg smash my target, puts the debuff on there, so I press T to press fire breath, get my kick on cooldown, get my other kick on cooldown, and press Q, so I just work Work my way around the keyboard and then it can turn back into whack-a-mole but at least i know the priority is to move across the board and in my weak auras right here i have them across the board and my weak auras and my keyboard are set up in the row and the order that i have my buttons also another nice thing i mean by this is combos if you have any sort of abilities that you use one then the next every single time using cooldowns possibly if you have a certain ability that's paired with a bunch of cooldowns you might want to put that on scroll wheel back and scroll wheel forward you have some sort of wombo combo you want to pull off in pve or whatever you're doing you scroll backwards it pops all your cooldowns you scroll forward and it casts that ability or another good example is on this monk they have a transcendence ability which puts a keyed spot in a certain location i now have that spot there and if i use the transcendence transcendence transfer ability it puts me in that spot and it I can teleport into that spot and switch places with it so shift scroll up sets that anchor and shift scroll down teleports me there very intuitive. So that's the big picture here on your keybinds. Think about the different categories. Get that spreadsheet going where you have every possible keybind you could possibly press. Think about what's comfortable for you. To watch the other videos, think about what the different spots. Is Shift W, is that going to be something I want to press? No. Shift Q, definitely not. Whatever it is, whatever buttons you have laid out, lay them all out, write down all of your abilities, and then start putting them in and use process of elimination. Go through those categories of what kind of things, the rotation, the cooldowns, mobility, offensive, defensive, you utility, whatever. Keep a big picture about the different sections of your keyboard and what sections of the keyboard would make the most sense for you, which I'll get into my own here in a second. Pair similar abilities together, pair different combos or different pairings of your rotation or combo moves you would use with your other abilities together and then use them in an intuitive way that makes sense with the feel of what you're pressing. So here's what my keybinds look like. For the mouse, middle mouse click is my trinket. Shift middle mouse click is my other trinket. If I'm doing PvP, then the just regular click with no no shift modifier is my trinket release and that's always just a really quick press and I can get out of there. Scroll forward is usually a movement of forward in some way. Scroll backwards is usually movement backwards in some way. That prioritizes everything and then in general I have the that scroll forward or backward and shift scroll forward and backward be a feel based thing. I fill those in either very very first right off the bat or very
very, very last. So for my druid, shift scroll forward is cat form because I'm running forward and attacking and shift scroll down is bear form because I'm all hunkered down. For the side buttons over here, this button right here is always my interrupt. Always, always for the first, since I've started playing the game, it, back when I had two mouse buttons, this should, is, was an interrupt for me. And if you only have two mouse buttons, I recommend using an interrupt and a mobility of some kind. Or, or whatever feels right for you. Again, back to this whole thing. Uh, this is usually my single target stun. This is usually my crowd control of some kind, whether it's entangling roots, cyclone, control undead, in prison, whatever it is, polymorph, whatever it is. This is always my mount. And I know that's kind of a lame thing to put on a mouse button, but I have plenty of keybinds. My keybinds are very efficient. And this is a great quality of life back here. So my mount is always this button number 10. This is raid target markers to be able to put raid target markers quickly. I use Opi, it's another add-on I have, I'll have video for uh, this is my quest map I just press it and it opens up the map and I'm good to go and how many times do you have to open up your map and then close it and then open up again close it it's just a really nice quality of life but if again if you want to put something more combat oriented here you totally can but these little three by three grid is always my combat based stuff uh, this little group of four right here are always some sort of cooldown usually this is an AoE stun if I have an AoE stun this is some sort of AoE effect and this, a lot of time AoE cooldowns are kind of put on this spot offensive in general then for the keyboard, this is a picture from the uh, Keybind tier list video. So the green is tier one, uh, yellow is tier two, purple tier three, and red is tier four. But in general, what I do is this is always my Hearthstone Opi. I have an Opi add-on again uh, that's it's gonna come out soon. Basically, Hearthstone. It's my Hearthstone Dollar and Hearthstone travel button, right? This is always Hearthstone. This is always health potion. This is always a class-based thing that heals yourself. Not a tanking cooldown, but a cooldown that heals myself a lot. A lot of classes have this, whether it's talented or not. Priest Desperate Prayer is a good example of, ah, oh, I heal myself for a bunch. So it's always right there above my middle finger. I can easily press it to save myself. And trust me, it saved me a bunch. Uh, four and five are offensive tank cooldowns. Any sort of tanking cooldown that has an offensive component to it is four and five. I do not bind six. Uh, six in general is world markers. I have it be a world marker thing if I need to quickly put a world marker out there, but I don't usually ever use that. Tab is tab target, but I, am, I go back and forth on if I actually even barely, I barely use tab, but the times I do, it is nice to have. So, and I'm fine on keybind buttons again, so I'm okay there. Q is is always my ranged attack. This is whatever in my rotation. It is throw glaive, it is Avenger's shield, it is a heroic throw, whatever type. I usually play melee characters. That is my ranged throw based thing. Or if I'm a caster or something, it is a high situation or a high cooldown cast of some kind. W is usually a part of my rotation that is situational, meaning it's based off of a proc or it's based off of if my te uh, death knight's a death strike. I have a, any sort of survivability types of things that I'm going to be used. Uh, spenders, there I, I build up things with R, T, and G. R, T, and G are my builders, and then W is my spender. R is my spammable builder that I can press all the time because it's the easiest button to press. T is usually a proc-based thing. If, if it comes up, then, oh, I can use it. W and T could be spenders. R and G could be builders. G is always my AoE ability. It is blood boil, immolation aura, a thunderclap, any sort of AoE around myself is always G. And if I'm playing a caster, I always have instant cast abilities be on this side because it's very easy to do with my middle, my pointer finger and casted abilities are on W and Q usually. Like hard cast, long time abilities. But anyway, Y is always my extra attack button. You know how there's an extra attack where sometimes you pick up something and extra action button thing that pops up? Y is bound to that. H is always my absolutely useless ability that you shouldn't even bind, but you do anyway because you don't want to not bind it, like a Battle Shout, Mark of the Wild, uh, Priest Fortification, whatever that is, just to kind of be able to pop, tap it. A is usually a part of my rotation that has the longest cooldown. So Dancing Rune Weapon, uh, some thing, my Fell Devastation, Breath for Demon Hunters, any sort of thing that has like a 30 plus second cooldown, but I want to use it off cooldown all the time. Because I don't want to break my pinky finger, I used to put A as like a hot mobility thing, or a part of my cooldown, a spender, or whatever, and I, I feel like I was gonna get carpal tunnel in my pinky, I was used to using it too much. And then caps lock, since this is a longer base cooldown, caps lock is usually something connected to this A button in some way. So my demon hunter, it's fell devastation, it's this cooldown breath, and then caps lock is metamorphosis, which also turns me into a demon form. Similar abilities that are kind of connected, or in a combo way, a dancing rune weapon is something that Death Knight always wants to use, and there's an ability called tombstone that you wanna use to get 
right after you use Dancing Rune Weapon, you like to Tombstone back to back. To back. So very much paired together, I use A and then use Caps Lock. Pretty back to back. Shift is just the modifier, that's just obvious. Z is always my movement, my mobility type of thing. Leap, any sort of leap a class has, a blink, any sort of sprint or dash or roll, that's always Z. Any sort of longer cooldown based movement is always X. C is taunt on every single tank that I have or a uh, dispel, soothe, any sort of thing like that. Uh, v is always also a similar dispel, slow, it's a heavy utility based button consume magic steel buffs whatever it is as a very utility situational because i really don't like pressing v that much it's so close to g i don't know why b used, used to be my mount it, b, b is a great mount button by the way uh, i think it's bags or something by default but b is my mount up button i like that a lot of people you've used shift spacebar that's a cool recommendation but it's not i'm not not the biggest fan of that because then whenever i hold shift i can't jump which just feels bad to me and i almost forgot shift commands shift uh i usually only use shift commands for shift mouse wheel scroll up and down that's a really nice one shift mouse wheel buttons is also another nice one i have so many mouse buttons i don't need shift mouse buttons uh because i have so many different mouse buttons but you really can be fine with just two mouse buttons and then the shift version of those mouse buttons are great uh and then i use shift r shift t and shift g are always my tanking cooldowns and then shift V is usually like a, a crowd control cooldown or some sort of fear break or crowd control break or something like that. And that's it. I don't need to use a lot of shift commands because I'm so efficient with the buttons that I do use and with the mouse with 12 buttons. Oh, and also shift W is always my racial. It's Lichborn if you're an undead. It's regenerating if you're a Zandalar troll, a uh, Torin war stomp, whatever it is. So there's the big picture. I hope, I really do hope that this video helps you with your keybinds because man oh man, is this, in my opinion, one of the biggest things that can make the game feel so good? I trust me, I, I challenge you to try and shake up your keybinds, do them different. And if you need to, start a character over and level one up. Whenever try these random crazy keybinds that you might feel way different. Try ESDF, whatever you want to do with your movement. Watch that video too. Level up on a character. Try it out on a level one character, start it from scratch, and then start to build in this thing and play around with mouse scroll wheel for it that's strange if i did help you let me know down in the comments of what your keybinds are now play around for a little bit come back let me know i really do love to hear swing by a live stream a live stream in the middle of the day usually around 10 11 o'clock central standard time i would just love to hear people swinging by and be like i love my new keybinds it's been so cool to help out people and i really love hearing it and if you want to support what i do here to keep growing this thing to bigger and bigger and trying to help more people optimize their game have more fun think about joining my patreon i'll put this link down in the description too Right now, all patrons get access to a full keybind document of an Excel spreadsheet of different keybinds in different little spots where you can take and load out your abilities and put them in there into this little template like I showed in the video. I'm always trying to go above and beyond for my patrons because y'all going above and beyond for me to make this whole thing possible. So thank y'all for everything. Stay creative. Think outside the box. Peace.